Hello, I'm Lisa Burkhart Worley, and welcome to Pop Talk, the show where you never know what topics might pop up. Are you still trying to figure out what you're going to be when you grow up? And maybe you're middle-aged or older and you're still trying to find your niche. I don't know. Uh, uh, but maybe we're going to be speaking to you today. We're going to interview a woman today, a good friend, who's going to help you to discover your destiny. Uh, because she does that with so many women all over the United States. But before we introduce her, I want to introduce our Pop Talk team today. To my far right is Aurora Ortega Guys. She's in from Bernie, Texas. <laughs> and she's filling in for Dr. Lynette Sim today. And she's part of our uh, team. She's our marketing director for Pearls of Promise Ministries. So welcome, Aurora. So Glad to be here. We get into trouble, though, when she's here. We go shopping, and that's just <laughs> never a good thing. Never a good thing, but it's fun. And then to my immediate right is Rosemary Legrand. Brand. Hello, everyone. A regular here on Pop Talk. So let me talk to you about our guest. Uh, you know, the definition, uh, the definition of niche is a place or position mm -hmm. that's particularly appropriate for someone or something, especially due to being very specific and different from others. When I chose to be a female sportscaster, it, it was when women were not doing it. Mm -hmm. But guess what? It was my niche because I was an athlete, I loved sports, and I was pretty good at public speaking and, and writing. So it just worked. I had found my little niche. And then later on, I did a couple of other things. And so I think your niche can change. And so over the years, you just never know. I never thought I'd be in ministry, that's for sure. So today, our guest is going to discuss this topic of finding your niche. Mm -hmm. And her name is is Dr. Marina McLean. I met this multi-talented Marina McLean uh, when she was vice president, still is, vice president of operations for Christian Women and Media. It's an organization that we uh, we both serve in. We just came off our advisory board retreat, so we spent a lot of time with each other. And I, and I heard her sing. I think it may have been the first time I've really heard her lead worship. It was powerful. I mean, we had goosebumps going down our arms, and and uh, you know we're you know teary. I mean, it was beautiful. So I was so happy that I got to see her giftedness. Not only is she a worship artist, she's a songwriter, a keynote speaker, and an award-winning author. Dr. Marina has released three worship albums. Uh, they are Glory or In the Glory, mm -hmm. Synchronized, and Encounter with Worship. She also periodically hosts some conferences. They're called Mega Woman Conferences, and she'll tell us about those in just a minute. But it's so wow. good to have you on the show, Dr. Hello, Maria. my friends. We, we've been wanting to, we've been saying, what can we talk about? I know, you know I know. We've been wanting to have you on the show. Yeah. It's just so good to see you. You're so oh. pretty and pink, and and, uh, I, and you're so interesting to me. Yeah. Um, you, you grew up in Jamaica. You spent yeah. a lot of time in London. Uh -huh. Can you just talk a little bit about your growing up years? And so, it's, so it's reverse. I, I grew up in London to Jamaican oh, parents. Okay. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry I had yeah. it that backwards. Yeah, that, that's good. But can you talk about your So growing up in London yeah. um, to to um, both Christian parents and I'm I love to say this because it's six of us all together, three boys, three girls, but I'm first girl and first girl born in London. So when we were together I always remind them I'm first generation UK, <laughs> just, to do, just to distinguish myself. But we, but we grew up in a very Christian home. Um, both my parents served in the church. And um, I always was a daddy's girl. So wherever he went, I wanted to be. And uh, I really, though, gave my heart to the Lord fully because I gave my heart to the Lord from 14 to 16. And what that means is summertime is convention time. So for the six weeks vacation that we have in, in London. It's always church going on. There's another church, there's another church service. So, so it was oh, fire for Jesus. And then my Christmas is, where is Jesus? <laughs> but at 16, I really had an encounter with the Lord and that has kept me going. And, and then I got married in London, have our children in London and we had a church, giving the really concise version. We had a church mm -hmm. and a Bible school. My husband has always been, um, a man that hears God and, and he would scare us as teenagers the way he talked about God because we thought only old people talk about God like that like then God are best friends you know I got up this morning and I talked to God and we all thought he was weird and um, but according to him I said I would work with him that's his version 
clearly I must have said that because I'm still working for him and with him and we're going to be married 38 years wow. this coming September. Beautiful. So that's the real short version. But I have a passion for the Lord and then I ran away from women's ministry because growing up in a Pentecostal church, the women's ministry only came out at Mother's Day and convention. And if they really had a call for the Lord, they'd send them as a missionary to another country to <laughs> preach. So I really didn't have a passion for um, women's ministry. But when we started our church, um, I didn't really call it women's ministry. I just called it um, helping people to find who they were. I think that's always been my little passion because the scripture that I've loved forever without really understanding is we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And I use that as, as a core principle in our early years of pastoring that wh whoever comes across my path, I'd find the treasure in them. I'd, I'd tr try to help them discover their treasure. And I just love thinking out the box and then trying to be real back in the box because that's not the way we do it. But I keep just, just keep pushing the boundaries a little bit. And so it's, it's an interesting journey, you know, especially when you're the first and you don't feel like you're the first yeah. because um, there's no rule book. You write the rules. Uh, but you try to follow rules, but you're writing the rules at the same oh, time. Wow. I love that, Marina. I just love that. And that's a word for me. I just find the treasure mm -hmm. in everyone you meet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There is hidden treasure hidden sometimes. Hidden treasure. Right? Yeah. Yes. And, and sometimes we can prejudge, especially when we've been hurt. And we, we prejudge. We say, oh, yes, I know. I know that character. And then you get to know them. And that, that's the thing I've had to really unlearn. Don't put people in my box. Don't judge them uh, according to my standard. And leaders, we have to relearn that all the time because people surprise you, good and bad. But when you find the good, oh, they truly surprise you when they flourish. Wow. Do you know, um, Dr. Marina, you are a gifted worship leader. Yeah. Tell me, how did you find your niche? Uh, or did you know what you were going to do as a child? If you talk to my mum back in the day, she would say Marina's been singing from she was two years old, out of tune, listening to songs on the radio. <laughs> 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 but um, I grew up with church choir, I grew up with school choir, I grew up with drama. But it's not until um, we started our church, and I think it was one Sunday, that, and for me, my niche, and even though I love singing, my niche came um, singing in the spirit, singing spontaneously, right? And my niche came one Sunday, and I'll never forget it because it's a fingerprint in me. I used to do the children's church, lead worship, then do the children's church because my children were little. And the only way I could keep them entertained because nobody could handle them was to do children's church. <laughs> so uh, gathering them up to do children's church, and there was a, just a lovely presence. I handed over the worship, I was getting ready to leave, and this song just came up out of me. And I, I can't remember all the words, but it was like, um, comfort ye, something like that, right? And so I'm just gathering the children, gathering them, and then singing at the same time, just like, Okay, and this, when you hear yourself sometimes, um, especially when it's a spiritual encounter, it's like it's an out of body because it's somebody else's voice, but you know somehow that that's me. So I'm gathering these children and, I, uh, and I'm leading, leading them out. And as I'm leading them out, I'm just singing and walking out. So not taking what's going on in the rest of the building, but they're just on fire because suddenly this came, where did this sound come? They're all looking for where this sound came from and I'm ushering children out. So it was a complete takeover. But then we watched God do that uh, in services. You know, the Pentecostal preachers or the charismatic preachers, when they get on and there's a good height in the service, they say, take it higher, right? <laughs> Even Miss thing you all know, take it higher. And worship leaders were like, what does that even mean, right? But I later learned it's that spontaneity, get everybody to add, and I say, add your voice print to mm -hmm. the atmosphere. Wow. And whether it's that, it's just saying hallelujah or I love you, Lord, just add your voice print. It gets everybody. And because it's spontaneous, ladies, there is just such a shift mm -hmm. in the atmosphere because as a, as a worship leader, we have all these songs that we that we rehearse. We've got the list ready, and when it shifts, you've got to just abandon that yes. mm -hmm. and just and just go with that presence. And it's the same preacher's listening ear 
it's the same ear that you have to, he to hear what God is saying in that moment. Mm -hmm. I, I love worship, I love and it. I love to harmonize with worship. And yeah. I'm a frustrated worship leader. I'm actually a closet worship leader, I guess. <laughs> yeah. you know, but, I, but when I'm at worship, I just, I just uh, I'm unleashed. Yeah. I, love, I yeah. love it. I, I, you know, I'm just pretending it's God and me. Yeah. You know? and, and the thing is, I help worship, because I, I do worship workshops, and I help worship leaders write the songs. I call it For the House. And I say to him, it's, you, it's so simple. You, we make it complicated because we overthink it. Because mm. it's what's happening in the atmosphere is what you're singing. The same way you'd pray what's happening in the atmosphere, you just add melody to that, yes. right? And like right here, it's just there's a, just a gentle presence, right? You, we're all needing to be refreshed, right? Yes. So if I would say to you, just lift your hands and just get lost for a minute. Sweet Spirit of God, refresh us. Sweet Spirit of God, renew us. Rest upon us, Holy Spirit. Come refill us and make us whole. Wow, where do you go with that such beautiful <laughs> yeah. melody that's just, as you say. Let's just throw say, out the question. Yeah, exactly. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just like, go to work. Yes. That is so beautiful. That's beautiful. And, and, and it's that simple, but that's because of your relationship. Yes. yes. And worship isn't just something we do on a Sunday. Yeah, you've seen me, Lisa. I get up in the morning. We, we, oh, you haven't been with me yet. We're, we're, we're I get up in the morning. That's and coming. It's we're coming. Just yeah, yeah. Together, yes. yeah. Destiny told you. Yeah, she's yeah. she's a little songbird in the morning because uh, yeah. people go to pray. I, I walk into my bathroom and because of the acoustics in there, I just immediately go into spontaneity. Whenever I'm quiet, when he says. What, you're not feeling well this morning? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Dr. Awesome. Dr. Marina, what I love about everything yes. that you're describing here in terms of shifting the atmosphere, I just love the fact that um, each and every one of us that walk into our own atmosphere, mm -hmm. whether it's waking up in the morning, we all have our own niche, right? Yes. And it's important because niche could also mean purpose. Mm -hmm. But Today, with uh, us coming out of this pandemic, there's so many people that oh. are leaving their jobs, they're readdressing, reevaluating, reprioritizing their lives, but there's a lot of people out there that are not happy with where they are. Mm -hmm. So can you just like walk us through, how can someone find their niche or their purpose? And I should disclose that I'm also a coach, mm. uh, an yeah. executive coach, yeah. with, and, and I have my PCC with yeah. International Coach. Coaching Federation, uh -huh. so coaching is very near yeah. and dear to Me my too. heart. Yeah. But let's hear you talk about how do you help people. So I think, I sh and I know that as frustrating as this season is, because there's a lot. Let's just address this. There's a lot, especially here in America, mm -hmm. that don't want to go back to work. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the market has changed, so they should, they're feeling they should be paid more. So you've so you've got that going on, but yet at the same time there is such creativity. Yes. If the, if you followed the various um, shifts that have happened, especially in America with the Great Depression, more, I tell this to people and I love saying this, more millionaires came out, was birth in the Great Depression than, when the Great Dep than before the Great Depression because creativity was at its height. Filling, finding a space in the marketplace was at its height. And so people were willing to take risk we're now in a new marketplace where people are willing to take risks because we now have this technology that to, for, for many of us, my age group, we're feeling like we are the... Um, Oh, we are the what the aliens that have just landed <laughs> learning a new language about NFTs and yes. crypto and Bitcoin. You're speaking my language, right? Here. And and you have these 14 year olds that are that are multi millionaires and training their parents. So it's it, there is a creativity mm -hmm. because knowledge is here, but you've got to find somebody who can give you that knowledge. And I heard this this weekend. If you're not willing to learn. You can pay people to, to do it for you. We call it outsourcing. Yes. And this is a fabulous time for people like us to outsource. And so to find your niche, 
what do you do? This is my, this is the best way I explain it to the ladies when I do this. What do you do that's common to you, that, that is just second nature to you? For some, they say cooking. For some, they say baking. Some say organizing. When I hear that, I just say, okay, I need you yeah, at my yes, house. Yes, exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> those, of us, those of us that are busy. Let me put you on my calendar. Right? <laughs> I'm an organizer. I love organizing. Okay, honey, I need you to give me your schedule. Don't worry about my schedule because I can give you the key to my house and let you in. Um, I love working on data input. Okay, I need you. So you have to find out where people are. And I think the easiest way, is the, you're a coach and, you, and you're a mom, you're a grandma, the easiest way is to feed people. Mm. They, are, they, oh, are, wow. they are not, there's no walls, we're eating. So what do you do? Tell me your story. Oh, you're good at doing that? So I have a friend, because yeah. we're networkers, right? Right. I have a friend who I must put you in contact with. And that's how people find their niche. Sometimes it's serving. When we talk about church world, people find their niche by serving. And I, I tell this to leaders all the time, be quick to move them on if they're not good at it. Yes. <laughs> don't, 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 keep them, don't keep them if they're not good at doing that. You, my illustration is, I want to sing in the choir. Well, there's alto, there's bass, there's ten. If you can't hit any of those, it's not for you, honey. Quite very simple, right? But today, there's so much creativity. And I think... Our enemy is ourselves because, one, we don't want to try anything new. Two, we hate failure. Three, we hate being critiqued. If, I'm, if I don't really know what I'm good at and you're critiquing me, I might, I might just throw in the towel. But then there's some people, um, the more you critique them, and, and so it's reverse psychology. Oh, honey, you, that's not for you. Darn it, I'll show you I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fuel, it's fuel. You've got to, you've got to uh, that's why I say, we have to learn people rather than just put them in the box. Because some people aren't challenged because you compliment them. They're challenged to, to, to prove you wrong because you said, oh girl, that's not for you. You, you ain't even got the qualifications. I'll prove you wrong. And the other th great thing about the Christian world is favor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Favor can open That's up right. doors mm. for you yes. like nothing else. But it's all based on servanthood. You have to serve. You have to be in there for no other reason but mm. to serve and to learn. Nice. And you may have your niche, but God may expand that. He may, you know, oh. like you're talking about learning. Yeah. I remember when I felt like the Lord was calling me back to media. That was my niche. Mm -hmm. But calling me back 20 years later yeah. to do a podcast. Well, I didn't know the first thing about doing that. And my son had a podcast. He was uh, doing a podcast for Xbox players because oh, he was wow. third in the state ranked. I don't know if that's something I should be bragging about, but at the time he's ranked third in the state in mm -hmm. Xbox. So we had a podcast to teach people how to beat games. Mm -hmm. And so he taught me how to edit yes. a show on GarageBand on my computer. Right. And, 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 and so even though that was my niche, perhaps communications, mm -hmm. I still had to learn the new technology. technology. Right? Yeah. You have to be willing. And now I love editing. I yeah. mean, I really enjoy the audio editing. Editing, it's, it's you know, it's not that hard anymore. And can I just throw this in, Lisa? Because we have a niche, that niche, let's say what technology changes, well, let's not talk about the iPhone because the iPhone changes, I feel like every six months there's a, there's a new. Yes. But um, technology changes, the generation of technology is every three years and sometimes yeah. it's, it's even quicker than that because of how much is expanding, right? From when Facebook started, when our children started school, uh, high school to now um, they were working and uh, you know, it's just developed into so many other things. But to stay relevant in our niche, we have to know the technology and yes. apply the technology. Or else we'd be obsolete. We say we've got a niche, but we're not profitable. That's right. Editing mm. has changed so much from when I was in television. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Totally different. And so I've had to learn a lot of that and still learning. Yeah. Hey, but you, you, do, you speak a lot into the lives of women through yeah. these mega women conferences. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about those conferences and, and what are you doing when you do them? I mean, wh how are you teaching and training the women? So, um, my, as you heard, my tagline is, you are a hidden economy. Mm -hmm. But when I set up these conferences, I have three main topics. Mm -hmm. Branding, wealth, and health. Mm -hmm. Branding, because we teach people you are your brand, right? You look it, you talk it, and every brand has a story. 
And when you start telling your story, that's what attracts people to your brand. It's as beautiful as doing hair is, you know, uh, you know, beautiful as doing computer work is, it's how you tell that story that gets people, we call it the buy-in, right? And then marketing, women, uh, I don't want to, I'm not addressing men right now. Women, we are the worst at marketing ourselves. We undervalue what we have. And so I, I bring in experts because, uh, you know, every, every sensible person brings in an expert because it makes them look good. I'm just saying. But I bring, in, I bring in an expert in that field so that it's not somebody that uh, did church school, Sunday school, and suddenly said, I've, I've got a marketing skill. No, I bring people, that's, that's their niche. And also it helps them get clients and it helps my people be profitable. And then the most important thing to me is health. I've lost so many close friends. At first it was other people's friends. Now it's, it's been family members through, through um, breast cancer. So one of the things when I have the right team, some of the cities that I go to have that facility where they'll do blood tests and um, blood pressures and stuff and, and give out information. And I love having somebody that is in that professional field where it's um, a naturopath. I hope I said that right. Because um, there's so many options now um, that is health homeopathic, is that the right word? Homeopathic. Yes, homeopathic. Mm -hmm. um, I was, uh, sometimes when I get really happy, I say it wrong. Uh, so I'm glad I got it right today. I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> but so many need to know that eating the right vegetables, eating the right fruit, you know, cooking, the, cooking meat the right way, you know, just those practical elements. Because some people are overwhelmed with all the information. But you can just start right where you are. So those are the three main factors. But I love seeing even women that have come in that are entrepreneurs fully in their field um, get inspired. Because another thing that I, uh, that I talk about, Aurora, is don't compete, collaborate. I'm right. very big on collaboration. And sometimes I get criticized for it. You're always, you're always putting people on your platform. And I came up with this phrase recently, Lisa, that you'll love. I said, for so long, I've wanted people to create a platform for me and they haven't, so now I'm not waiting, I'm creating a platform for others. Because in doing so, it promotes them and it promotes me at the same time without me saying, it's all about me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Wow. yeah, I love that, that's what wow. we do here. Is we, we, wanna, so. we want to promote other platforms mm -hmm. and to uh, tell other people, we just had a fatherless uh, ministry on and yeah. we just want people to help uh, and, and push that out, yeah. that, you know, that God is Father, and, yeah. and with you to help women find yeah. their identity. Yeah. We believe in all of these things. Exactly, wow. yeah. Do you know, it's so important, though, because just, just before I quote that scripture, you know, that's what I say every morning. Mm. I ask the Holy Spirit to set up my appointments yeah. for me mm -hmm. today yeah. because sometimes I don't even know what to do. Right. Yeah. Now, Proverbs 19, 21 says, many are the plans in a person's heart, yeah. But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Amen. You know, why is it so important to lay your life before God, you know, when it comes to your future and also um, to stay on topic, to stay in your niche? Why is it so important? Many other plans, yes. right? And when you think of plans today, our thoughts are constantly rampant, right? Um, no matter what niche of life, stage of life you're in, your thoughts are just bombarded. But when faith and God is your foundation, and that, that's so important, I hope somebody really hears that. Yes. When faith and God, sometimes we separate the two, but when we marry the two, we, the things that we do in faith, you, without faith you can't please God. That's right. <laughs> right? Without faith you can't even see God. Indeed. Right? And, and when faith is that important, it's those, how do I describe it? Let me go to the scripture. Faith is the evidence of things not seen, yes. right? And there's so many times God speaks to us, we have no reference point right here and now of what that is. We've made the plans, we've written it down, and God suddenly shifts that. And we have to trust him. Yes. We have to listen to him. And I heard somebody say, um, for those of you that are wanting those six figures, Make God your CEO. Make God your yes. chief partner. Whatever decision that you're, that you're going to make, ask God first. And all of us here as ladies, and I've listened to you talk before we came on, and I know 
Lisa, we've had something together. She said, I didn't have my prayer time today. And, and when we were at the retreat, and she, and she said, but this is what hit me in my spirit. That told, spoke to me personally that no matter how busy she makes time to hear God. I could tell you that I make time to hear God, but hearing a fellow friend, a fellow peer say the same thing, you know then they have the same discipline. And because we are women finding our niche, we want this common denominator, I trust God yes. before I make a decision. Amen. Mm. It's really powerful to hear yeah. uh, you talk about having God as your CEO, and mm -hmm. it's such a great segue for this question for a lot of the people that are watching us today and you know, in the future. But uh, Business News Daily had written an article and it talked about how to find your business niche. Mm -hmm. And in that, they feel that in order for you to be successful, you have to find an unmet or underserved need. Yeah. I call that understanding your tribe or knowing the heart of God, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but this research also says once you figure that out, then you uh, identify where is your customer base mm -hmm. and then you begin to build the plan, right? Yeah. Write down your plan, make yeah, the vision plain, plain yeah. right? <laughs> And then market your business, like you were talking about in yeah. terms of marketing, mm -hmm. bringing in the masters to that specific audience. But um, I've been in the business world, corporate business world, yeah. for over 25 years. But here is something really important. How do you find your business niche? And, and how is that different, perhaps, mm -hmm. maybe not, mm -hmm. from God's calling in your life? I think it's one and the same because it's the principle. You know, we start with that principle. In the Christian world, it's find your purpose. Out of your purpose comes the, the destiny. And then you, you, you work, you're working towards that constantly because you know what your purpose is, right? In the business world, they've changed just taking a, a, just a, a different approach. You know your market. So you know if, you're, if you're to, your base is young, Right, whatever the age group, uh, knowing your tribe, is it is it a different cultures type thing? You know, uh, the black culture, we, we tend to stay among, market it to, the, to blacks. And now we, people are learning this word diversify, right? So you've got a broader um, profitability. Let, let's talk business for a minute, profitability. But when it comes to our Christian walk, even if you just kept it within the church, the church is your marketplace, that should be an excellent starting point, but it's not the finishing point. I do want to mention yeah. uh, before we close the show that you and I are going to be yes. speaking at a conference in, yes. in near Atlanta, Georgia, uh -huh. in Claremont, Georgia. It's called the Arise and Unite Conference. Yes. And you're going to get to hear Dr. Marina sing mm -hmm. and also speak. And I'll be speaking as well. And uh, we want you to come. Please. So if you're in that near that uh, Claremont, Georgia era, even if you're not, and you can drive over, come on and see us. You can get tickets on Eventbrite. It's April 22nd and 23rd. That's a Friday-Saturday combination. You will not regret it. It's going to be a powerful conference. If you'd like to speak to Dr. Marina uh, or, or maybe even sing at your next event, you can reach her at uh, Dr. Marina. McLean.com. So D R M A R I N A M C L E A N.com. And we'd love for you to reach out to us here at Pearls of Promise Ministries. Our website's Pearls of Promise Ministries.com. Uh, on Twitter, we're at Pearls of Promise or at Pop Talk Media. We're also on Instagram at Pop underscore Ministries. And welcome to our latest television platform, Covenant Daughters TV. Now you can find Pop Talk on 10 platforms, including Live Network for Women, World Trumpet TV, Overcomers TV, CTN Tallahassee, and the Bloom Network. And that is Pop Talk for today. We're just ordinary girls who God's turning into pearls. Have a wonderful week.